Who would have thought digital holography and moving objects could go together? In this video, we present microscopic multi-wavelength height measurements on objects moving with up to 75 mm per second despite a large numerical aperture. Here on the bottom, you can already see a measurement going on. However, it is important to note that this is slower than the speeds we use for actual measurements. Later on, we'll show real-time measurements which are quite fast. Often, interferometry is limited to highly reflective objects like mirrors. To measure rough surfaces as well, multi-wavelength holography is a great measurement principle. It's camera-based, so you can get millions of 3D measurement points per second. The actual resolution below 1 micrometer allows precise knowledge of the structure of the object you are measuring. Also, holography is usually limited to objects that are not moving. Recently, we demonstrated measurements on moving objects using a non-magnifying setup with 20 mm field of view. As a next development, increasing the lateral resolution by using larger magnification in a microscopic setup would open up new application fields like roughness measurements or measurements on small functional structures with defects in the micrometer range. If you want to use microscopic imaging, this typically involves a large numerical aperture and thus larger observation angles than unmagnified images and these larger angles make you more sensitive to motion. We've written a paper on the effect of aperture size. You can see a link below. Here, we present the first microscopic setup that can measure moving objects with several millimeters per second using two wavelength holography. And now we will go through the setup step by step. We use two lasers. As you can see in the video, they emit red light. They emit slightly different wavelengths so that the difference frequency corresponds to a larger wavelength and we can measure heights unambiguously in a range of about 40 microns. The light is coupled into fibers and split by fiber-based beam splitters into object and reference beam. In the object beam, two cylindrical lenses shape the beam into a line to have higher illumination power and thus shorter exposure times. A normal lens focuses the light through the aperture into the 10 times microscopic objective so that the object is illuminated through the objective. The light is reflected back by the object, passes the objective and the aperture again, and is then imaged by a tube lens onto the camera. The reference light is coupled into the reference arm by a beam splitter and is tilted to the optical axis with different angles per wavelength. This modulates the interferogram with a carrier fringe pattern, and because the angles are different, the spatial carrier frequency is different for each wavelength. That makes it possible to distinguish the wavelength by their carrier frequency, and we can extract the height information of the object from a single image, which is very helpful for measuring moving objects. So, raw images like this are acquired. One single image covers a line-shaped measurement area of 3.5 mm times 0.4 mm with a lateral pixel pitch of 0.45 microns. The raw images are Fourier transform. You can see that due to the different angles, each wavelength appears at a different position in the FFT. By cropping the first diffraction order for each wavelength, the phase can be acquired and the phase at the synthetic wavelength can be calculated. This synthetic phase corresponds to the height map of the object. A sequence of single images is acquired and subsequently stitched together so the object is scanned and the measurement area is nearly unlimited in the direction of motion. In this setup, the object moves perpendicularly to the optical axis so that the optical path length changes as little as possible. For a mirror, the optical path would not change at all. This setup measures moving objects, so we could basically measure objects that are infinitely long in one direction. So finally, you could see the 10 euro cent coin moving with 35 millimeters per second here, in real time. You can see the result of stitching the sequence together and then unwrapping the image. On the right, you can see the final height map and there is a red line indicating a small cross section. In the zoomed image, you can see all the small scratches, and in the cross-section, you can see that this dent is only about 5 microns deep. Because we combined lots of camera images, the combined image has quite a large number of pixels. So even if you zoom in, you can see these small defects, but you still cannot see the individual pixels. But 35 mm per second was just the beginning. We tested even larger velocities. 50 millimeters per second.
and even 75 mm per second, which is really fast. Even at this high speed, a standard deviation of about 1 micron can be achieved on a groove normal at 75 mm per second. So, we have shown that it is possible to perform high precision holographic height measurements on a microscopic scale, even with large numerical apertures of a microscope objective lens, and even with really fast velocities. In conclusion, this means that digital holography is no longer the limiting technology when it comes to measuring moving objects.